Well, hello, boys and girls. So when I feel like at a clock and I am Pearl of Wisdom, you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And we have the finest Anaheim Ducks writer in, in the land here in Delhi and also a fantastic podcaster as well. In fact, he's asked me to kind of do a little work for him and I'm doing a little podcasting, aren't I? Yeah. It, yeah. Yeah, we already have one out. Yeah, yeah, you already have one out. What is it again? I, I watched it. I heard it was fantastic. Thank you. Episode one of the podcast where we cover, me and my buddy cover the L.A. Blades, uh, the minor league hockey team in L.A., uh, Southern California's first professional hockey team that went defunct after a few years but had a huge impact on the landscape of professional sports here. And then the sad story of the American Basketball League's Pittsburgh Pipers, which is interesting and also very depressing. <laughs> it was a little bit, yeah, but it was still interesting. Like I never knew a lot of that stuff, and and um, it it's so interesting to see how things can take that don't make it through. You know what I mean? They have a root and they don't make it yeah. through. Stories behind the struggles and all that stuff like that. I think it's going to be a fantastic. Uh, um, series um a lot of people you really want to check it out because it's been fun but today we are going into some interesting things we're going to do we're going to talk about some news that just came out first of all about the league that i was aware of then we're going to talk a little bit about the league that i wasn't aware of that uh, delhi just told me about right now and then after that I personally purposely did not look at these retro jerseys yet. And we're going to do a live kind of reaction from me. Um, and we're going to put our like little spin on what we think about what the jerseys look like and all that stuff like that. I'm kind of excited to see it. It was tough for me not to, <laughs> to avoid everything. I did see two of them. And I'll tell you who they are <laughs> when we do the video. But first, Deli, get us uh, going here, buddy. What, what do we have for news? In the league right now. Yeah, a couple of uh, a couple of interesting kind of breaking news stories in the last twenty four hours. Both uh, Greg Wyshynski with one of the pieces and Larry Brooks with the other. We'll start with the the Larry Brooks from the New York Post covers uh, some so the NHL for them. Uh, basically, tweeted last night that uh, and released a story that the NHL has contacted the NHL Players Union and requested kind of a renegotiation of the CBA that they agreed on in July, uh, supposedly claiming that COVID has really impacted the the finances and the revenue of the league harder than they expected and kind of trying to trying to get the players to do a redo. So uh, I would not be happy if I were the players union and, and from tweets by uh, uh, by Larry Brooks and, and an article by Elliot Friedman. Um, it, it looks like they aren't happy. Uh, I mean, I, I look at this I, I, as a fan and as a as a somebody in the media, the way that people would look at a player holding out like you signed the contract if you if you thought that things were going to be worse. Uh, you signed the contract in July when COVID was already a few months uh, in. So, yeah, things have gotten worse, but that was kind of predicted. I, I don't really have a lot of sympathy for the NHL on this front. I think the players' union should stand pat. Yeah, I mean, they're really doing some harm here for themselves, the league in this way. I guess the only... I'm going to try to play devil's advocate here uh, and say that they have some organizations that are just on the brink and all of those sort of things like that. I will real. I do take that in. I would take that into consideration, but I don't think the general public is going to be leaning anywhere near the owners on this one. You already made a I mean, if a player did something like that and said, I know I signed a contract, but I don't want to be there. People would lose their minds. And this is like you said, basically the same thing. They sign a contract, you live with the contract. And that's the way it is. If if you're really wanting the Arizonas and then let's just put them out there to to make it, and that's what you want. You are billionaire owners who are making a lot in advertising through having an NHL franchise. That's what a lot of people forget. Oh, they say, well, it's very expensive to have a franchise. Yes, but it's an advertising. They they spend the kind of money they do on their teams on advertising every day. So this is actually fairly cheap advertising for them, and they're coming off as greedy blah, blah, blahs. Right yeah. Now, uh, <laughs> agreed. You're right with the millionaires versus billionaires kind of argument. The, the distinction, and I, I agree with you there, I think the distinction 
that we should make is that not every NHL player is a millionaire. I mean, and, and I think every NHL owner is a billionaire. So, uh, there are, there are certainly things like, imagine, I, I think it also puts a players union in a tough spot too, because there are those young players or those, imagine you're a player who just cracked an NHL roster or yep. looking, looking at training camp. Like you've just got a chance to finally make it or, and all of a sudden, the the league comes at you and they say, hey, we don't know if we can operate this year. It's like, well, you want to be you want to have solidarity with with the play with the rest of your players because hopefully in the future when you do get that chance, you're going to have a better deal. But even those young guys who are making the NHL minimum or even the journeymen who are, they're in a tough spot because I'm sure they want to play this season, but they they kind of got to stick with their with their brothers and their brothers too. Uh, so I'd be I mean I'd be upset if I, if I were a player for sure. Um, and I mean. Yeah, there are going to be. You can look at it from the owner's point of view. Like, well, listen, if if we can't if we can't sustain our normal operating procedure and the cost that it's going that we're going to incur, we're going to have to fire people. So, some people are going to have to lose their jobs. Some people have already lost their jobs. Uh, but I place more of the onus on the businessmen and the owners who maybe should have been a little more conservative the first time they the CBA when when COVID was here because a lot of people were saying it was going to get worse and and it has so uh, I don't have a lot of sympathy for the owners. Um, yeah, it's the only thing I can say is I'm not an owner and I don't know what the losses we're talking about here and all of that stuff like that. Maybe if I sat down with a owner that you know with the right heart that I may see a different direction, but I know from outside for this looks really horrible for them. Because basically like what you're saying is it looks like they're basic, they're putting players in a very difficult spot because prospects, new guys, are just that's one year of development. It could be ruining careers here. Mm-hmm. You know? And so that's, uh, they're basically using that as leverage to, for players to take a hit more than they already have. And I know a lot of the players have made a lot of money and, you know, you're playing hockey or whatever the case may be. But I played, I wanted to make the NHL. I know guys that did make the NHL. People just don't understand what they have to go through. These people are insane. These, It's insane to get into the they, As far as I'm concerned, they deserve every penny that they make and more for what they did in their life to get to where they are. And um, the owners, to me, looks like they're poo-pooing on all of that just to grab a couple bucks more in their pocket. That's what the perception is to me. I could be wrong. But. And the, the dirty I mean, the dirty word that they're using, which, I mean, gives me a brain freeze as soon as I hear it, is escrow, the whole escrow process, which, I mean, I know what escrow is in real estate, do you? <laughs> like, you're a house, but I, I, I still don't fully grasp this whole escrow concept in the NHL, and I think players hate that word. And from what Friedman's report said, and Larry and Larry Brooks's report said, that they're basically the NHL is trying to increase the amount of money that goes into escrow. Uh, there's two proposals, according to Friedman. One, a short-term proposal that's just increases escrow for this upcoming season, and then there's a longer-term proposal, which I think the original nation was escrow in the next couple of years and then lower in the later years. But they want to re- increase escrow in the later the later years, like three or four years down the road when hopefully things are better. Uh, and I think players <laughs> have heard hate escrow and hate increase in escrow and uh, still not quite sure what that means in, in terms of the hockey perspective. But uh, uh, if that's something the players hate and, and, and they want to increase the percentage that goes into escrow, you can this doesn't look good. <laughs> Yeah, it is sort of saying that we're going to pay you back later, um, sort of. But there's been a lot of discrepancy, and that's a big thing going. How much are they actually getting back later? Not to mention the fact that the money they're saving, you can be sure as heck that those owners are putting it into investment opportunities and making money with it. That's what players do, too. Mm-hmm. So they make players make more money off of investment than they do off their salaries, just like anybody who has lots of money does. So if you take that out, you're taking out that you're they're They're not making the money in the time that you take to pay it back. You're basically borrowing money off them with no interest. I'm not sure if there's interest involved there, so I shouldn't say too much about it, but it all sounds ugly to me. Yeah, sure. that, that, that makes sense. So it decreases their short term earning power. Uh, when it comes to their investments and their, yeah, I get it. All right. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, but, 
let's talk something a little more interesting that doesn't have to do doesn't give me such an ice cream headache. <laughs> Okay. Uh, okay. So the, the other bit of breaking news, uh, Greg Wyshynski of ESPN uh, posted on his Twitter. I'll, I'll read the tweet exactly just so I don't get anybody confused. From today's column on ESPN Plus, this is what I'm hearing for potential divisions for the NHL's 2021 season. Uh, and then I'm adding this part, if it happens, because we just talked about the whole CBA stuff. So there's going to be four, according to Wyshynski, four divisions. Uh, there's going to be Canadian division with obviously the Flames, Oilers, Canadians, Canadians, Canucks, Canucks. Um, the Eastern Division, which is kind of what we talked about in our last episode, is going to be the Boston Bruins, Buffalo Sabres, Carolina Hurricanes, New Jersey Devils, New York Islanders, New York Rangers, Philadelphia Flyers, and Washington Capitals. So that one, uh, certainly a kind of a deadly combination. <laughs> um and then Central, we've got Chicago Blackhawks, Columbus Blue Jackets, Detroit Red Wings, Florida Panthers, Nashville Predators, Pittsburgh Penguins, St. Louis Blues, and Tampa Bay Lightning. Finally, the West is another, uh, I'd say, murderer's row. Anaheim Ducks, Arizona Coyotes, Colorado Avalanche, Dallas Stars, Los Angeles Kings, Minnesota Wild, San Jose Sharks, and the Vegas Golden Knights. So... <laughs> Uh, the West sounds pretty deadly to me. The East sounds pretty deadly to me. Um, like we talked about last episode, the Canadian division has, I think, a good kind of mix, but nobody who's really a major contender, but also with the exception of maybe uh, the Senators, nobody terrible. Uh, and then you've got the Central, which is an interesting mix of Southern and, and Central division teams. I don't think it's quite as strong as the East and the West, but with the Lightning and Blues in there, it's it's definitely going to be an interesting uh, uh, divisional matchup, I'd say. Yeah, the other Western one is, to me, by the South, that sounds like a feast or famine type of league division right there. Uh, you can almost be say that Colorado and Vegas will almost assuredly get the bit with the president's trophy there, the way with the competition they're going to be at. And that being the case, the way the divisions were before, that might have been the case too, because there were some pretty bad teams out there. But uh, there, in that way, in this format, for sure, they're going to be feeding on those lesser teams in a pretty big, bad way. Uh, I feel Ottawa will 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 definitely probably be the worst team in the league next year in that Canadian division. There's not a, a simple easy game that they'll be going to get, going up against. Actually, they'll all have a very difficult time. None of them would win the Presidents for sure. You couldn't take any of them to do that. And that. Not at all. And uh, and Ducks fans, going to my a little more my personal expertise, I'm sorry if you thought you were going to make the playoffs this year, unless there's some really weird playoff format. I don't think you're going to be making it coming up against the Stars and the uh, Golden Knights and the Avalanche on a regular basis. Even the Kings, I think, are going to be better. Uh, the Wild Sharks and Coyotes, meh. But the Ducks, to me, are the worst team in that division. Yep. That would definitely be the worst team in the division. Um, I think the Sharks are going to be a lot better than people think. And, uh, and the reason why is um, I think Nabokov, is, they found themselves a goalie whisperer there. I think their, their goaltending is going to be way better. And that's really been their biggest problem. So could be very difficult for Anaheim there for sure. Um, the other East, uh, was there, there wasn't really anybody horrible in the other East division, was there? Uh, Detroit, 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 Detroit's going to get spanked. Detroit's, again. yeah, Detroit's in the central. So Detroit has, I mean, gets to play. Uh, yeah, there's nobody. I mean, the central to me is a little more like the Canadian division where there's nobody who's atrocious, but there isn't anybody besides the Blues and Lightning who are really contenders. Uh, besides the, the Red Wings are atrocious. But, I mean, the Blue Jackets are good. The Blackhawks, yeah, they might be doing kind of a rebuild, but they've still got some good pieces there. The Panthers, I think, underachieved this year. And then you've got Nashville and Pittsburgh, who are, I'd say, on the decline, but still good. There's a good kind of good mixture of talent there. The East is going to be, again, I think you've got really realistically three contenders there between the Bruins, uh, the Capitals, and the Hurricanes. And you have the Flyers, so that's four contenders. And the Islanders, I don't know, people think that they're they could be better next year. And the Rangers, that, I'd say, overall is the best. Average collection, on the average collection of teams uh, division. That's going to be a t ridiculous division. Uh, the New York Rangers, I think, is a lot better than a lot of people think, give given credit for. Um, I don't think the Islanders make the playoffs in that division, honestly. Unless Sorokin, the Sorokin kid is just lights out. 
I don't think they can hold up against that competition constantly all the time. I really doubt they'll make it, which is saying a lot for the division, not about how poor the Islanders are, really. Yeah, even the Sabers, I think, are going to be uh, take a big step forward. I think that's a good. That's a that's probably from top to bottom the strongest division. Yeah, that'll be fun to watch a lot of those games there. Um, well, thank you. I didn't know. I, I, like you said, you just brought that up before we got on here. Um, that that's very interesting. Uh, I I did talk to some people for the Canadian division in the East. I never really thought about it, but it makes uh, obviously they're not happy because the Leafs will be playing a lot out west and they won't be able to watch the games unless they stay up all night long so that that makes some stuff that's difficult um i was wondering have you heard is, is there going to be any interleague play at all or do they only play each other through the whole time I th- is, there, I th- is there any I, talk of that i don't i haven't heard any talk of it i mean with the with the border issues between canada and the united states i do, i mean it doesn't make sense to me that that they'd be crossing the border but between the states i wonder if if maybe there's some sort of uh, I don't know what a safety valve or something in case all of a sudden the numbers go down or there's a vaccine that's really being distributed quickly and is effective and that they can kind of open the the, the travel a little more uh, it seems like it would be kind of a nightmare to reschedule things but I don't know if I, if I'm the league and, and taking into account that they're feeling like they're taking a hit in their uh, and their finances with the, what we just talked about, I wouldn't be surprised if they just kept it within the division minimize travel as much as possible for a safety and cost reasons. Yeah, and then, of course, it would be one hell, heck of a rivalry filled 60 or 72 games or whatever they're going to do. Yeah, it would be pretty intense. So I kind of look forward to that. Although I do like watching teams play each other teams and the different angles and all that kind of stuff like that. There's something to be said for building a rivalry like that for the playoffs for sure. I know this, I'm just joking about this, but how brutal would it be if they, if the NHL caved on the players, not basically not letting them renegotiate the CBA and they're like, all right, well to save money on travel, you have to take trains everywhere. Like it's the 1940s. (laughs) I, I think this is a ploy to try to get a little bit more out. I don't think the owners have much of a leg to stand on. It doesn't make any sense. Cancel the season is going to affect them way more. Just as much, if not more, like it just doesn't make any sense. I think it's a ploy. I don't know what's going on there, but we'll see in the little next little while. So let's go to the uh, the kind of fun stuff. Then we'll go. We're gonna look at uh, the jerseys. I'm gonna bring up the jerseys here now for the first time I've seen them. So give me a second here. Uh, I had it and then I lost it. Uh, first of all, the first one's going to be the Anaheim Ducks, so I'll let you talk about that because you're the Anaheim uh, extraordinaire guy. Uh, you can uh, you can tell on. me what retro jerseys are. Okay, I'm bringing them up right now. First time I've ever seen them, and I'm going to look at this. Is the one that I've already seen before, actually. Anaheim, yeah. What do you th- What do you think of this? So they they call it the Wild Wing jersey, the uh, throwing it back to 1995, where they had the uh, the old Mighty Ducks Wild Wing mascot breaking out of the ice, holding a stick. And you know what? I've heard people around the league that aren't Ducks fans love this jersey. I can't stand it. I just think it looks worse than the original. I think that the original one that got so much heat when it came out for being ridiculous. I I like it. it kind of went and switched it with the 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 white with the green ice and the white background but i just don't i have something about a lack of symmetry on jerseys and this just it hurts my brain like i i don't like it i would have preferred they would have gone back to the old there there were the old pajama ones from 98 99 that kind of had the long stripes on the shoulders i think that would have been better i would have liked just the shield with the wild wing mask more prominently featured or and this is a i have to give credit to uh chip layman of the totally off sides podcast which i do she said why not go back to the district five jerseys from the original mighty ducks movie the the green with the animated duck skating i think that would have been great i mean that's never been I, as far as i know featured on a ducks jersey so uh i would have preferred them maybe to go that route or the pj's route the old pajama jersey but this one to me doesn't do it yeah, I'm looking at this on, uh, what is this, the NHL website, whatever, and the guy wearing it looks about exactly what I would look like if he's, like, really sad and upset. And <laughs> I, 
I would I would definitely be very sad and upset if I had to wear that on a regular basis. I think that's terrible. I give it an F. Uh, so let's go to the Arizona Coyote then. Um, what what do you think of that? I I I'm lukewarm about it. I like the I like the I guess you call it the the Coyote kind of guy that was on the Kachina jerseys, and I like the kind of bottom with the the desert landscape. And the blue color. I don't think there's anything I necessarily dislike about it. I just I don't love it. I I don't like it at all. I I, I get it. Like I don't know for some reason I like things that are purposely ugly. The problem I have with this jersey is it wasn't purposely ugly. If they were trying to make it purposely ugly, I would have liked it a lot more. And we'll get into that later, as <laughs> uh, probably as we go through jerseys, because I'm sure there's going to be somebody that does that here. Uh, so let's go to the Boston Bruins. You're a Bruins fan. Yeah, you, this like, guy. The... I, I, the only thing, I, I, it looks good. It looks good. It's classic jersey again. I just, I think the Bruins have some fear of going new school. They, <laughs> they always throw it back. They, they did with the Winnie the Pooh jersey back in the, in the 90s, and people kind of teased them for that. They didn't have to go that far, but I just, I want some, a little more. It's called reverse retro because I think it should be a little bit futuristic as well. I, I want them to kind of go outside the box with their jersey on this one. The gold looks great. The crest looks great. But just maybe some 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 sort of, I don't know, spokes, the spoke B, maybe bigger, maybe throughout the whole jersey. I just want to see something way more out of the box than the Bruins organization has traditionally done. But overall, I give it maybe a 6 out of 10, 7 out of 10. Okay, we're going to do it that way? Um, we, I mean, I we could. I give it a seven. I think it's nice. It's wearable. I always look at it as wearable. This is something you can wear with your clothes and go out and stuff like that. As far as a selling feature, that's great. But I do agree. It'd be nice for Boston to kind of break that image of just always being like so safe. It's safe. That's the word. Mm -hmm. It'd be nice if they got out of their safe box. And uh, so that's the reason why I give it a seven. So let's get to Buffalo then. Uh, I, this one, I get the literally give this one a meh. Like I like, <laughs> I like the swords. I like the kind of the old, um, the old kind of what they were going for the 2000 Jersey and the original black and red. I liked you. You'll, you'll find out more about my feelings about red later. Uh, but this, this white it's, I prefer, I, I just prefer the one they came out with a little better recently, the gold one with the old crest that they were wearing this past season. This one doesn't do it for me. I maybe go five out of ten. I just saw this. Uh, to me, it looks terrible. It looks like something I would have bought at Kmart back in 1982. It's <laughs> especially the buffalo in the line. Like, I don't know what they're doing here. And this is supposed to be retro somehow. I, I see, like, this is supposed to be future. It's like, Reverse retro, I don't see any reverse in this retro. This looks really bad for its time and bad now. I don't like it at all. Uh, Calgary Flames? Okay, I'm looking yeah. at this for the first time here. Okay. I Now, I've heard people say they love this for some reason. I do love it. I, I like the I like the fire breathing horse on the front. I've always I liked it when it was when it was the original jersey. When I mean when they came out with it back, it says ninety eight here. Um, I remember it fondly from playing NHL two thousand three. I think on on Xbox. I uh, I do like this jersey. I think the the kind of the complaint that people have as Prince fans is that it looks a lot like the Canucks old or mid to early 90s jersey in terms of the color and the, the kind of the triangle, I guess, lines on the jersey. But I do like this one. I, I'd give this one 8 out of 10. Wow. I give it like 3. I, uh, I, I, I just don't like the color combinations. And I don't know. It's just not for me. Oh, geez, I'm terrible so far. I haven't liked anything. <laughs> so now we're going to go to Carolina. And did they just go all Hartford here? What, what's, what, yeah. what do you got? Okay, uh, what do you think of this? As a native New Englander, but was not a Whalers fan when they were around, I was. Uh, I like this jersey. I think it's good, good classic throwback. I like the gray. A uh, lot of nostalgia with the uh, with the logo. I, I'm I'm good with it. I don't I don't think Calgary had many other. Excuse me, not Calgary. Carolina had many other options to go with. I mean, they've really had a similar jersey throughout their history. 
uh, I'm changed much so much so. I, I like this Whalers thing. I give nine out of ten. Oh yeah, I don't give it that high. <laughs> I would have I would have liked to see them put their Carolina logo with the colors. You see what yep. I mean? Yeah. That I would have that, that I would have liked. Why didn't they have to go all Hartford? Why didn't they make they can celebrate themselves a little bit? You know, that's kind of but I mean everybody loves the Hartford Whalers jersey and they did do a very retro version of that. All of that. So I'll give them all of that. I'll give them about seven, seven for that. Yeah. Uh, and the, sorry. The, hur- the hurricane and the hurricane and whale is still kind of a nautical ocean theme. So I could see that you could go with the same color, but the, the hurricane's logo somewhere. I, I agree. Yeah. yeah. I think that would be a little better there. Okay. So first time I can't even really see this one, the Blackhawks, where they hiding it or something or what? Yeah. This caused the controversy on Twitter that the, the, uh, there's a theory that they don't want to bring attention to their mascot, uh, that it might be offensive. Um, just Aww. from what I can see, <laughs> I don't love it. I, I don't love it for the same reason I'm not crazy about the Bruins one. It's like it, Chicago's another team that always does the safe, classic uniform. And, I mean, they're really going for a safety on this one if they're afraid of uh, causing a controversy over their mascot. Um I would have liked to have seen a little bit more flashiness, maybe some different colors, uh, maybe the full black. I know they had they had that full black uh, jersey that they had in the Ronick era, I believe it was. Maybe go with that one a little more. This one just seems too safe to me. Yeah, from what I can see, I'd I'd, I'd have to agree with you. It, it wears well. It's I'll give him like six and a half, half, six, something like that. The the guy who's wearing it with army pants. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh wow, this is interesting. Colorado Avalanche celebrating the Nordiques. How do you like that? Love it. I love this jersey. Ten out of ten for me. I think it looks great. Regardless, I mean, even the the girl who's wearing it's pretty good looking. I uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think I think I give it a ten out of ten, and it it looks like it's kind of doing what you were saying with the with the Whalers Hurricanes. It's going kind of a mixture of the logo and and uh, of the Nordiques, but the color scheme of the Avalanche. I think that's a this is a great combo. Yeah, I like the way they celebrated both here. Uh, I like the color combo. I think it'll look good on the ice. I agree. I don't know if I go. Maybe I'll have to see the other one. I'll give it a ten. But it's right up there, eight and a half, nine for sure. And then, oh my, what the hell is that? <laughs> is that that's obviously Columbus? Yep. Oh that's, gosh, it's I gross. guess I already, I guess I already sold what I think of it. <laughs> I uh, here's my thing. I love, I love red. Red's my favorite color. I'm gonna rant. And I'm gonna rave and, uh, about some of these coming up that are. I hate this one though. This one, the the Columbus. That CBJ stick logo thing that they've had going on there. Just put the wasp in there. Put the blue jacket in there. It yeah. looks better. It'll be it, the color scheme will be better. Maybe I mean I think I would have liked it a little bit better. Although this is probably encroaching on the Capitals' territory. If they took those stars from the sleeves and either put them down like the cuff of the sleeve and either put them down the entire white part of the sleeve, or if they're not afraid of stepping on the Capitals turf, putting it along that bottom, bottom blue part of the, uh, of the stripe of the Jersey. But I, I don't like the way it is the way it looks right now. I, I would have liked it better if they just went mainly blue and put that anyways, whatever they did. Uh, this looks like a Jersey I would have wore in like minor hockey. You know what I mean? Like that, that's what it looks like to me. It just looks really unprofessional what's the white all it doesn't i don't know who did that I, they need to find somebody better <laughs> so that is terrible 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 f for me i like <laughs> if, if there's one worse than that then i guess i'll give it but i can't imagine there is i'll do, uh, I'll did, do two out of ten just because it's got red on it okay <laughs> dallas stars uh, i don't know how that's gonna look on the ice though right no, it's good. It's camouflage. They went with the camouflage on the ice. They're trying, <laughs> <laughs> they don't want anyone to see them. Uh, it's too boring. I, I like the old, the, look, was this 99? The old giant star kind of outline with the green and black, but uh, I wish they hadn't gone all white with it, uh, mostly white. I give it 5 out of 10. Yeah, yeah. Barely you, 5, I'd say. Barely five. You run oh. the risk of you run when you do that much white 
over white, you run the risk of it making it look like a practice jersey, which uh, another team is an extreme <laughs> broke that law big time. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think we'll. I, I'm going to say five, but as soon as I see it on the ice, I think it's going to be even less. I, I don't think that's going to be very good. Okay, so what do we get? Oh, okay. <laughs> the Detroit Red Wings talk about a lot of white. Wow. Uh, Two okay. words. Practice jersey. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, I'm having to like, get in some time to sink in here. I think the problem here, myself personally, I should have let you talk more about it, but you just gave me two words. So uh, I think what they're trying to do is say the only retro we have is back in 1918. Like, you know what I mean? So I think that's basically what they're doing is they're going way retro and trying to – they should have modernized more, though, somehow, I would say. Uh, weird, weird, weird. Yeah, power practice is the best way to put it. Yeah, for sure, I guess. I think how these teams could have done that they probably tried to avoid uh, because it looks like kind of a cheapo knockoff is made the, made the logo much, much bigger, like – maybe splashed across the entire chest down the sleeves. I just think teams with these small classic logos that went with the safe route should have been more aggressive. And why bother putting gray on the elbows? If just... Yeah. Okay. Anyways. Uh, yeah. It's a two for me. Yeah. Uh, the Edmonton Oilers. And this is odd because I'm an Oilers fan and I did manage to not look at this until now. Uh, what do you think? The inaugural whole first Gretzky's first NHL season and, and the transition from the WHA to the NHL. I like it generally. I think it's good. I, I, I'll give it an 8 out of 10. I think it's a, a good classic look. Um, I guess the only thing I would have liked a little more, which people hated. I You can tell me from, from living in Edmonton, being an Edmonton fan. I love the old gear with the oil droplet from the 90s. I wish they had incorporated that. People like that here actually quite a bit. The gear, the gear of a logo. The people like yeah. it quite a bit. I would have liked to see, and I would have seen, liked to see something a little more flashy, uh, for sure. Because we're talking, to me, it just looks a little too retro. I'll give it a seven. It's, it's okay, six or seven. It's wearable. It's it's good. It's not bad. Uh, wow. Okay, this is the first time seeing this. Florida Panthers. I like it. This reminds me. I don't like it so much of the uh, because for the nostalgia, but when I was a, a mite, I played in a tournament against a team from Massachusetts that were the Panthers, and they had this this almost is exactly this jersey. It looks so similar, so it brings back very good memories from my childhood, which is why I'm I'm partial to it. So I'll give it eight out of ten. I gotta give it nine. Actually, I really like it a lot. I I think maybe it's in comparison to their actual jerseys. I would think that this would be a better thing to wear. I, I I like it. I like it. I like because of the improvement on the original. I think I put it a little higher. Okay, so we're gonna get. To, oh, what's this? The L.A. Kings. What do you like about that, or do you like that? Love it. Nine out of ten for me. The only point that's been taken away uh, is that I. And maybe this isn't fair. I love the Chevrolet style Kings logo. I wish it had been over black. I still, I still love that black and and white with the Chevy logo color scheme. I know they went with the the Lakers, whatever Lakers purple and the Forum purple and the Forum gold uh, to kind of do a mixture between when they had the crown. But I think overall it looks great. I think it's good. If it had been black and if it had been some form of black and white, I would have liked it even better. It would have been a ten out of ten. But I'll give it a nine out of ten. Yeah, I like that a lot. I give it a nine out of ten. Very wearable. They did a they did a really good job with a difficult color scheme. Uh, yeah, I very much like that. The only thing I could say is, is it how is it really as futuristic as it could be? But it's kind of classic. But it's, there's something about that purple. It just always. I think that it was kind of an unfair advantage for them because everybody loves that jersey, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so Minnesota now, okay. We were <laughs> this is kind of going into what I was saying about what I thought Carolina should do. What do you what do you what do you think about this one? Yeah, uh, maybe it's the color combos. I think I think they did go with the right spirit of the thing, like you're talking about color a color combo from an old team with their own logo. But I, I just not a big fan of green, white, and yellow. I maybe six out of ten for me. I, I love the logo, but the color scheme still isn't my favorite. 
I'm going to say this is going to be a tough one for me because yes, the color scheme never worked, but the, <laughs> you know, it never did. But they did what you were supposed to do, and because they put the wild logo in the front and they used the colors of their old self, I'm going to give them a little higher than that. I'm going to say eight. It's only the problem really only being that the color scheme was never nice. Yeah, I, I used to call it the refrigerator. Remember the old refrigerators that <laughs> yeah. were those colored, popular at the time, or before that time? Yeah, that's that's about the only thing. But I'm going to give them an eight for using the logo and doing kind of what they said, what they were supposed to do, following the rules. And the Montreal Canadiens. This one I like actually the most. Out of the original six, I think this is probably my favorite original six because I love – uh, the combination of the blue and red I looks good. I, I'll give it an 8 out of 10. The only thing, I like all the original six teams, I wish they had just gone a little more out of the box. Like, this is not going to be your permanent jersey. This is not, not going to somehow switch to a home or away jersey. I don't think that was the spirit of, of what they were going for. So think out of the box. Get a little more dangerous with it. But those are my only deductions. Overall, color scheme and logo looks good. I would say that about the whole league, actually, to tell you the honest truth. It's time to start moving forward and forget about this whole idea that we got to respect the past, la, 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 la. The past is the past. It's cool, but it doesn't, just because you do something different doesn't mean you don't like it, the past. So I agree with you. But I do like the colors. It's wearable. I think a lot of people will buy this. And I think a lot of uh, women will buy this for their men because it's going to look better than the actual Montreal Canadiens <laughs> jerseys when they wear it out and stuff like that. It's very fashionable. I got to give them that. There's no doubt about that. Where the Minnesota one on the other hand, yeah, <laughs> not so much. Whoa, okay. Uh, Nashville is, Predators. I have a lot of mixed feelings about this whole group in general. <laughs> uh, yeah. Nash Nashville uh we're going to talk about the islanders in a second but nashville is i feel like is go is a similar uh thing to islander syndrome uh what's for i mean kind of like your old jersey maybe a little bit more of an angular pattern on the sleeves but uh not a fan mm, four out of ten can't stand it <laughs> for the spirit of what they were trying to do here and like and again, the guy you're watching on the same thing as me, that guy looks like about what I would look like if I was wearing that jersey. And then, oh my gosh, with the Merry Christmas stuff, New Jersey. Okay. I didn't even, I gave it a, I gave it a two, one for Nashville. I don't like it. But New Jersey. New, New Jersey, at first, I mean, I, I remember seeing those old green and white and red jerseys when I was younger and like the old cards. They, since I remember watching hockey, it's always been the black, white, and red for me. I'm a little younger. Uh, and I remember seeing those old jerseys back on cards, trading cards that I had. And I was like, oh, I don't like that. Uh, I still don't like it. It's just a, a green, white, and red to me is not a color scheme I want to see outside of November, December. <laughs> yeah. And if I am going to do it, um, I would have modernized it to put more black in it, far less green and more red. Uh, yeah, I, I don't like this at all. I don't even see it as more, it's, it's retro weird. It's not mm -hmm. cool. There's nothing cool about this at all. I don't want to wear it. If I was a Jersey fan, I probably wouldn't buy it. Uh, yeah, it's not, I don't like it. I like it better than Nashville, but I, and what was the other one I gave a zero to? The Buffalo, yeah. <laughs> New York, New I, York, sorry? I think this one gets a three out of 10 for me because it's got yeah. red. I do like red. I love the, I, I've always loved the Devil's logo. I think it's cool. Yeah. Um, but the green doesn't, maybe it's just the green being in there just grosses me out. Yeah, I don't like it either. New York Islanders? What did they even do? I don't see it. Like, it's just the jersey. It's like the, Where's the change? I mean, I, maybe somewhere on the stripes, but that just looks like a regular Islanders jersey to me. I, there's yep. no originality there. It's just nothing. A they zero. Changed, they changed the stripes for the worst. Yeah. For worse. They straight. They changed it for worse. So yeah. No. 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 <laughs> Three for me. Okay. Now we're going to the New York Rangers. I loved this jersey back in the when it, or the, at least the logo when it. They had Gretzky. I, I always thought it was a good one. I like the full blue. I think I think this is where you go. This is where you, you credit an original six team for thinking outside the box, 
having a good design and and not really not really insulting the past. I, I, I give this one a nine out of ten. I like it. I <laughs> I haven't given it a ten out of ten yet, but I I really like this jersey. Uh, I I'm not okay. I'm not as big of a fan. It's kind of boring to me. It looks like something's missing on it, but I do like the logo, of course. Yeah, that was like their best logo ever. You knew that was the one they were going to go with the Liberty logo. Uh, to me, it's just kind of boring to me. I give it a six. Like it's okay. It's okay. it's okay. We should we should cover the models' faces because they're really. I think they're coloring our opinions. <laughs> this guy. This guy yeah. looks like actually my wife's yeah. cousin. Uh, he looks about. He looks as boring as the top out part of this. He looks as bored as the. What did they get these models? Yeah, exactly. What? Why yeah. did they? Maybe they were supposed to not show emotion for the purpose of the. I, I don't know. But Ottawa, we're in well, Ottawa now. Actually, I should I should go back just so I don't insult my family members. I love my wife's cousin. Uh, great guy. He just looks pissed off. He looks like he reminds me of uh, my wife's cousin when he's upset. So I like. Yeah. It. Uh, it's yeah. just all right. So on to Ottawa. Uh, <laughs> you all look like you're kind of mad to be wearing this. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, Ottawa, love the red. Don't love anything else. Six out of ten. The more points you get. <laughs> yeah, I I, I kind of like it. They went with the heavy red. Uh, I don't mind it. I think it's about a six to me. Nothing spectacular, but I don't mind it. Not much to say about it. It's like one of those things where yeah, I saw that. That was yeah. good. Philadelphia, <laughs> Philadelphia, my other team. I, this one, I think, for, I, you've seen this. You, I know this is the first time you're seeing this. I've been looking at them for a few days. This is the one that has increased the most for me. At first, I, I wasn't a huge fan. Um, but as I've looked at it more, I love it more and more. I think the... I think part of it is the sleeves, like the black. I didn't know the picture. Maybe it's my color blindness, but the picture combined with the orange background almost makes the sleeves look brown. But reading that it's black and kind of now being able to like discern that it's black, I love it. I like that black over the over the sleeves. Love the of the always love the orange. Uh, so I give this one a nine out of ten. Really, I'm not a fan, and we'll see if it grows on me too because I don't know why. I, it's very Philadelphia, though. I will give it that. That's about as Philadelphia as you can get. Philadelphia is not what you call fashion conscious <laughs> as a as a people. And this is like, yeah, this could be a football jersey. So yeah, I, I kind of get it. Like I get it. I do get it. So I'm going to give them the fact that the uh, my personal opinion. At least they went out of the box a little bit. They did a little bit of different stuff. So I'm going to give him a seven. I'm going to give him a seven for that. And fittingly, the model looks like he's ready to fight you. So just like yes. Philadelphia. <laughs> just like Philadelphia. Pittsburgh. Don't love this one. Uh, I liked, I really did like the old, when I was speaking about nostalgia, the old Pittsburgh uh, logo with the penguin. Not the old one, but it was kind of the triangle. It looked like the Batman penguin. I really liked those jerseys. Those were... Growing up, Penguins fan of you and and Kevin Stevens, I used to be afraid, almost afraid of those of the Penguins back then when I was a little kid. I remember Chris Tamer. I used to go to Bruins game and watch Chris Tamer on the on the. I think he was a defenseman, Penguins defenseman. Just scared the crap out of me in that in that black jersey with that Penguin logo, that very like cookie cutter but kind of clean Penguin logo. I wish they had gone with that. This one, uh, diagonal letters is classic, but it's not it's not what I'm looking for. It's black. Man, I give it a five, I guess. Yeah, same. Um, I still, I'll never let them down for calling themselves the Penguins. So I'll <laughs> never let them down for that. Penguins, like, okay, whatever. I won't, get, I won't go any more rant on that. I've done it enough. San Jose Sharks. What do you like about that or not like about that or whatever? Uh, I like the color combo. I've always liked the logo, but it it's just too maybe too plain for me. I think uh, I give that a seven out of ten. Yeah, I think I give it a five. It's pretty boring to me. Uh, down a, a downgrade from their original jersey, so that's not really that great for me. And then the St. Louis Blues. Okay, so what do you think of that? I love this one. I love the red. I love the yellow. For some reason, this color combo does it for me. I love the blue. The blue music note with the wings. I mean, their classic logo. I love the red with the gold stripes. I don't know. It gets me going. I think I, this one's a 10 out of 10 for me. 10 out of 10? 
Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to say this. This is one of their most, what most people think is their ugliest jerseys. And I like the fact that they celebrated that. That's what I like about it. They brought it out and said, ah, here we go. <laughs> it's, it's one thing to do something and think you're doing something nice and it's ugly. It's another thing to go back in your past or go back into something and celebrate something that you were at one time. And I think this truly celebrates the past for them. But then also has uh, a modernish. Maybe if there's one thing, it's not really as as reverse as. But I like what they did. I really do like what they did there. I got to give it a nine. I like that one quite a bit. Tampa Bay. It's nostalgic. I mean, Tampa Bay is one of those teams that's not really uh, doesn't have a ton of nostalgia going for it because it's not. It's relatively young. Uh, the only thing. I, my only criticism, and maybe it's too recent, is I liked when they changed their logo a little bit to look more like the Electric Sunglasses logo. Uh, I mean, they might still have that. I mean, I think it is still that, so they can't really re reverse retro that. This one's a mad to me. I give it a 6 out of 10. Uh, I think it was a tough for them to really do anything because they haven't really changed much. And I, I think they could. They might as well. If they might as well went right out of the box. I figure. If they were going to do it, so I give them minus points for that. It's pretty mad. I give it a five, and then the Toronto Maple Leafs. This is a similar to the uh, to the Devils syndrome that I had, where I, my old hockey. I remember seeing this kind of style jersey from my old hockey cards, uh, and I just was like, Ugh, I don't get rid of that. I don't want to see that. I don't. <laughs> I don't like that gray sleeve, the white vertical sleeve. Don't have time for it. Three out of ten. I don't. Okay, whatever. I'm saying I don't even want. I don't even know if I can say anything about that. Who would want to buy that? Good thing it's Toronto, because because they're not selling that anywhere else. Yeah, they uh, show. Up. <laughs> what's that? I said they show up when they lose. They buy ugly jerseys. They are fully on on board. I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, well, they'll buy them. Oh yeah, they'll buy them. They could have been pretty much anything, and they would have bought it. But oh, okay, Vancouver Canucks. Love it. I love this one. Uh, I think this is another one that's improved in my head since I first saw it. Maybe it's the model. Uh, definitely like that model. Uh, <laughs> I like the color. I kind of like the fading. I like that that whale logo. I think generally, and I like that it's bigger than it normally is. The whale logo looks like it's been increased in size. I think this is a, a pretty good in the spirit of of what they were looking for. Outside the box, but not too flashy. The colors really say Pacific Northwest to me. I wonder if they maybe uh, stepped on the Kraken a little bit. <laughs> I wonder if the Kraken wanted to go with this color scheme and, and if they're going to change things. I'm sure that they coordinated with the NHL. Adidas did, considering they make those jerseys. But I would definitely kind of picture this as a Kraken color scheme as well. I love it, too, because I see a whole lot of stuff that's out of the box here. Like you said, the fading idea. Uh, this is retro. Like if you're talking about exactly what uh, reverse retro, this is it right here. They absolutely nailed the spirit of what they were trying to do. Color combinations good. Wear as well. I think both sexes could enjoy this. Uh, wear this on a regular basis. I think they absolutely knocked it out of the park. This is my first ten. I think this is this is really cool. I like I, that a lot. I'd give. I think I'd give that one a nine just because. We've, I've saved my my tens for the the murderers row right here. We'll call it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Whoa. Okay. What are we? That is Vegas, right? Yeah. Yes. I love this jersey. Uh, this is my favorite one of the whole bunch. I love the red. I love the logo. I've got actually got a red T-shirt with that logo on it that I got when I played a men's league game at, or men's league uh, tournament in Vegas. Uh, overall, I, I think they did this perfectly, as well as the inspiration. I mean, talk about a team that doesn't have a lot of history to, to fall back on, but they found an, an IHL team, uh, the old uh, Las Vegas Thunder, and, and the factoid that they included on this little blurb that Manon Rayom played for them uh, uh, in the IHL. I don't know if it was before or after she played in that exhibition game in the NHL, but I just love the history. I love that they thought outside the box. I love the jersey color, all the stripes, everything about it. I love it. I think this is going to sell for ages and ages and ages. In a way, like, I don't really like the color combination. I think it's kind of wild and crazy and maybe even on the ugly side, but it's perfectly ugly. I would buy this jersey 
because of how they went and just said, wow, check this out. <laughs> I love this. I do love it. I gave a 10 already. I can give two 10s. That's there. okay. I'm giving Perfect two score. 10s. Ten. I think, I, think, uh, I think Vegas probably has the best uh, combined score between the two of us. So we've got two more to go, but uh, I yeah. think Vegas is, in the, is on the leaderboard right now. Yeah, that's really, really, really cool. I like that a lot. Uh, wow. Okay, Washington Capitals? Also 10 out of 10. Same, same read. The red, love the – and for reasons that I described for other teams, I love the increased size of the logo, that Eagle logo that they had uh, back, well, probably we'll say mid to late 90s all the way to the mid-early 2000s, right when Ovechkin started there. I love that jersey. I love the color. I love the capitals, the font, everything. I don't quite I, – I, maybe I'll give it a 9.9 out of 10 because for some reason I don't love it quite as much as Vegas. Maybe it's the symmetry that Vegas has versus uh, Washington, but I still love that jersey. I, I like it better than what they wear. I'm going to give it 8, 7 or 8, something like that, just because maybe it's not my favorite colors. But the, like I do agree with what you're saying, the – the idea, I give a lot of, because just because I have personal colors who really matters, it's the idea. They did go off, and they did go very, uh, re they did do the reverse of the retro the way you're supposed to do. So I think they captured the spirit very well. So I'm going to give them an eight. And then we have the Jets, and I'm going to talk a little bit about this because I can just imagine what you're going to say. <laughs> yes, zero out of ten. Uh, absolute fail. I, I, listen, I like I like the old Winnipeg Jets jerseys. Uh, I think it's fine that they kind of cross franchises because, as many of us know, the Winnipeg Jets moved to Phoenix. So that this whole gray color that looks like like two weeks after a snowstorm, the snow plows plowed all the dirt onto the side of the road. Gray color, gross. It depresses me. And the blue as well. The, the, dark blue this is just a depressing this reminds me of just a long horrible winter i was just gonna tell you that everything this jersey is is what winnipeg is <laughs> and they're gonna sell a lot of this in winnipeg you're not gonna find more conservative people than manitobans and i'm from alberta fairly darn conservative they are probably gonna love this jersey i do not love this jersey at all Especially after everything we saw. I but it's so Winnipeg. It is so Winnipeg. Just as Boston was so Boston and all of that, this is about as Winnipeg as you can get. And I can imagine we're holy crap, we're almost an hour, buddy. <laughs> wow. This is we, we did a really long one for you here, but it was worth it. It had to be that long because this was a lot of fun, Delhi. And uh Thank you for coming in and making all this frolic for us. We've enjoyed it immensely. I'm sure everybody out there has. Um, we'll be uh, putting. I want to. I'll put your podcast down in the, uh, the, the your first one you did. Thank I'll you. grab it and I'll put it in the comment section and everything, and you guys can check that out. Really, this is so exciting, guys. It's so much fun to what he's doing here with the uh, Lost Teams podcast. I think it's going to do really well, and I think you're going to really love it. So uh, thank, thank you all for coming out, and uh, we'll all segment this out for everybody so they can watch every certain part of it. Thank you, Deli. No problem. If you guys have learned anything from this episode, it's, it's why my wife insists on dressing me when we leave the house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Everybody take care. Have a great day. Don't forget to subscribe. Lots of love to you.